when you watch what the Pats were able to do, uh, first to the the, the, the high-powered offense of the Pittsburgh Steelers, what was your reaction? I wasn't surprised. I knew that the Pittsburgh Steelers had, you know, a young secondary, and I knew, you know, with the Patriots, uh, the game plan changes every single week. And I knew that they would probably attack the secondary and, uh, and, and, and play it. You know, Tom Brady and, and Josh McDaniel, those guys are unbelievable when it comes to, to finding a team's weakness and attacking it. And uh, if you're going to attack the Pittsburgh Steelers, who was a much improved defense uh, in a lot of different uh, ways leading up into that game, that's, that's, that's what you would want to do. You would want to spread them out and, and find those matchups in the passing game, and they did that. How come Pittsburgh, Mike Tomlin has come out and said, like, look, they, they chose uh, to, to play how they played because of the personnel, meaning he didn't think his guys could cover in man-to-man. But, man, Tom Brady had a lot of time to throw back there. How much of that was P- Pittsburgh's choosing and how much of that was a dominant performance by the offensive line? I think both. I think uh, you got to make a choice when you, when, when you look at your opponents. And I don't think it's a bad choice by uh, – by Mike Tomlin. Um, you know, if you blitz and you bring a lot of pressure, you, you leave holes in the back end of your secondary and you leave guys in one-on-one coverage and guys, you know, you, first of all, you got to make sure that the, the pressure gets to the quarterback. If the protection holds up um, nine times out of 10, a quarterback of Tom Brady's caliber or Aaron Rodgers or Matt Ryan or big Ben, or when you go down the line, they're going to hit the open receiver there's going to be a gap or a huge void in that in that coverage somewhere. Uh, those quarterbacks are good enough to find it. So you're gambling, and you know if you're going to give your team the best chance to win, uh, he didn't want you know he rushed three and four. He didn't want to bring too many guys blitzing. He figures best chances were going to be uh, to play really really good coverage on the back end, and 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 not give up big plays and make uh, you know pretty much make New England work for everything they got. Which back which backfired? Like at some point, do you go like, "Hey, this ain't working. Let's try something else." Well, I think you got to mix it up. You know, as, you know, Keith Butler's the defensive coordinator. I think he's been in the system for a very long time. His defense has had a lot of success, but you got a lot of young players, and you, you know, you had two rookies starting back there. Uh, you know, you got some young players. You had some in, some some injuries. Uh, this group is just starting to gel, and you know, you, you do have to mix it up. You got to mix those pressures. Uh, you know, within the game plan, you can't be blitz happy either. And, you know, you can't just sit back in the zone uh, an entire game either because, like I said, the good quarterbacks start to carve that apart. William McGinnis to the NFL Network joining us in the Doug Gottlieb Show, CBS Sports Radio. Um, okay, so Ben Roethlisberger uh, hints at the possibility that he's not totally sure he's coming back. Uh, what's the likelihood that you, Willie McGinnis, think Ben Roethlisberger plays next season? I think Ben has a lot left in the tank. I think after uh, players that's that's been in the league for a substantial amount of time go through a grueling season like they've had, uh, you had a, a game, the AFC Championship, which takes a lot out of you. Um, you want to sit back and reflect as a veteran player. Um, you know, Ben Ben's a tough guy, and, he, and he's a physical, you know, he takes a lot of hits, and he puts a lot into a season. So it's not odd that, uh, a veteran quarterback or a veteran player wants to reflect after the season, but I'm sure uh, we'll see uh, Big Ben, you know, back in uniform with the Steelers next year. Like I said, he's been playing at a high level, um, and he has a lot left in the tank. And you know, with today's game, a lot of players, you know, he mentioned his family and his health and you know other things, uh, he, him wanting to do. Uh, and, and, and you understand that. You, you definitely understand that. But uh, a season takes a lot out of you, you know, especially uh, when you lose a game like that in the fashion you lose it and, you know, you're a little disappointed and uh, you're just kind of worn out physically and mentally. So you do need that break. I would say after about a month or so, uh, he's going to be itching. He's going to be excited to come back for another season, Willie in my Mc- opinion. Willie McGinnis from the NFL Network joining us. Uh, do you view Matt Ryan differently now than you did going back a couple weeks ago? No. I, I took Matt Ryan to be in this position. I picked him um, to be in the Super Bowl. I thought this offense would be playing uh, at the level it's playing at. Um, they 
I just wanted to see over the last five weeks of the season, I wanted to see more balance. And I was able to see that, um, you know, they started to run the ball a bit more. They started, they kept using the running backs. Uh, the offense was, was playing better than any offense in the league. I just wanted to make sure that the defense was going to come around. Uh, Willie, you with me? Yes, I'm with you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Now I got, I got some noise in the background. I'm with you. Can you hear me? There we go. Much better. Whatever that is, much better. Keep going. Yeah, so once the defense, you know, came along and they started playing uh, complimentary football, I knew this would be a dangerous, you know, a dangerous team going into the playoffs. Willie McGinn is joining us. Okay, so look, you've been in that, you've been in those meeting rooms before. No one knows better about the ability for Bill Belichick to manipulate a game plan. But there, as you point out, there's a lot of weapons. There's a lot of weapons. Uh, you have Julio, but you can't just focus on Julio because they have other guys that can that can light, light you up. You got Sanu, you got Gilbert, you got the two running backs. Best guess uh, what the what the preliminary game plan from Bill Belichick is heading into Super Bowl 51. Well, you know, it, it, it's a long ways away. And, and I could just tell you that all those guys are a problem that you mentioned. Um, they got phenomenal running backs. Julio's a problem, regardless of how you try to guard him, whether you try to double-team him um, or, or cover him one-on-one. It's going to open up holes for Sanu and Gabriel as well. So I think just going in, you got to be smart. Um, you got to mix your coverages. You got to put a little bit of pressure. You can't let Matt Ryan have all day sitting in the pocket. Um, with with the team like this, it always starts, you know, up front. So you can't you can't let them run the ball effectively on first and second down, um, and you know, give them a short third and five and manageable. But you know, this this offense is is is, is loaded with a big play. Big play is waiting to happen, and. Kyle Shanahan does a great job of mixing and matching formations and moving his players around to find those matchups. I, I, they kind of resemble what the Patriots do. You know, they, they find those great matchups and they take advantage of it. So it's going to be a great chess match uh, between Matt Patricia and Kyle Shanahan. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how this thing plays out. Um and like I said, you've been there. You, what percentage of it is Belichick? What percentage of it is Brady? Well, it's their team, you know, and they all come together. They all work together. Uh, Belichick will come in there and, you know, he'll talk with Josh McDaniels. Uh, he'll sit with Brady. They'll find the holes in Atlanta's defense. And he'll help devise a plan for that part. And then, of course, we know he's a genius when it comes to the defensive side of the ball. But Matt Patricia one of the smartest guys who is the defensive coordinator is one of the smartest guys I know. So with him and Belichick getting together and, and Matt Patricia coming up with a plan, you know, you're not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to just stop everybody. Sure. You know, the plan has always been when I played on that defense was just to limit the big plays and explosive plays, try to take away number one and two, you know, players on that offense and then make the players that's not, consistently used to being in the spotlight, making big plays constantly, make them beat you. And, you know, but that's, that's hard to say because Atlanta has so many weapons that's used to touching the football. You know, Matt Ryan does a great job of spreading the ball around. So uh, it's going to be a huge task. And they, they understand that and they know that, but they prepare better than any team in the NFL. So I, I know they'll be up for the task.